Tara with Five Acres Honey Farm and it's been a while since my last video so I have a lot to get you caught up on. Uh, I figured I would share a few things about what's going on uh, but first before I get into that and before we get in the hives I will show you our pond garden which the last time I showed you this I was so behind on getting my transplants in. So I've got my transplants in and I also have some pumpkins growing so we'll take a closer look at this and at what happened with my tadpoles, which are now the smallest frogs ever, and they're really, really cute. So uh, we'll start here and then we'll go around and take a peek at everything. I harvested garlic from both of these beds and um, we have some travels coming up, so I have not put anything in here yet. Um, I'm going to plant some calendula in here and I think I'm gonna put some type of like a barrier over it so that <coughs> um, both the deer and the birds won't get the young seedlings. And um, and then um, I'm still giving some thought as to like what I wanna put in here for the summer. Um, last year, um, I think I had shared in one of my earlier videos that I did a three sisters garden in one of these. Um, actually that one, cause I had just one bed up here and you can see where the old um, corn stalks are. Um, I just left them in there. So some native pollinators can use it for whatever they need. Um, and this bed I put in um, last fall. I was going to add some more beds this spring, but of course with the high tunnel and such, things got really busy. I just laid down some more cardboard and I'm gonna put some compost over that because there were some straggly spots where um, the cardboard wasn't really touching um, when I had put the topsoil and compost down um, over the winter and in the early spring. So you can kind of see it's coming up a bit. So. That's gonna help um, control that as the summer um, and the weed pressure gets higher. Um, this is what I believe is a Japanese stilt grass and it just comes up seasonally and it takes over everything. Um, my plan is though is in the fall to do uh, cardboard and topsoil on this. I just wanted to get this established first before expanding this area. So knowing that it was so successful here, it's gonna make it, me feel a lot better about continuing it through this whole space too. Um, so, I just saw a bunch of these little guys, and you can see they grew so quick. These are the little teeny tiny frogs that used to be my tadpoles. They're all over the place here. Um, that's just a shirt that I had put underneath the liner when I installed the pond last year, so I just need to do some work on the rocks here. But I got my plants in. I got white sage, lavender, um, blue sage, which is a blue salvia. Um, you can ignore the plate with honeycomb I had put out. Um, some pieces had, um, some pieces of burr comb had been in the hives and I had tasted some and I left it out for the bees to take back. Um, this is motherwort, which is just awesome. And it actually, and I've got the squash growing up it too here. Um, I'm gonna have to fix that. Okay, I got that detached. Um, so my idea here with the pumpkins and this is a, um, and squash, it's a blue Hubbard squash. Um, that's the first one, but there's quite a few coming through here. Um, my idea was to have, I wanted the whole front lawn to be pumpkins, um, but I'm just doing this section right now and trying to rely on all of the large squash leaves um, to help suppress weeds. We got some more setting in here um, so that the weeds won't take over so much. And part of this space will be all cardboard and topsoil this fall. So I got a brown turkey fig in here and then I figured we'll just have this space kind of come out and join right in here and just kind of slowly expand this so that the front yard is all a garden. Uh, I'll just do a quick peek of the, the front um, deck garden and then we'll head over to the high tunnel and you can see things have expanded quite a lot since my last video. I don't believe I was able to post um, a May garden tour. Um, things have been just really, really busy. Um, but this is my favorite tomato ever. Um, this is a, uh, a Paul Robeson tomato. So I've got a bunch of those plants growing here. I am experiencing some type of a fungal issue on my tomatoes, only a few plants up here. So I'm going to apply, um, some neem oil from what I was reading. Um, this particular affliction can happen right after they set fruit if you are planting in the same space year after year. So this is the second year, third year, 
third year I'm growing tomatoes in the same bags, um, some of these, so um, just a sign of how important crop rotation is. And a quick note before we go to the high tunnel, um, two quick notes actually. This is white borage. So borage, if you've seen my earlier video about good pollinator plants, it's usually a blue flower um, and they it replaces its nectar every 15 to 20 seconds. So these are also used, um, they're very sweet. You can put them in drinks, make candy out of them. Um, and you can see there are a lot of flowers about to open. Um, they're a great companion plant to tomatoes. So I've got all my basils and borage in here. And of course, marigolds, cosmos and calendula, all good companion plants. And this is the big butterfly bush that was distracting me a moment ago. Of course, at this moment, I don't see any butterflies on it. The quail may look a little different to you since last time. Uh, we had um, just about a dozen quail that we hatched last fall and uh, we have now 34 in here. So I hatched out a lot of quail about f almost five weeks ago. They'll be five weeks old in on Monday, um, this coming Monday. And uh, I did harvest uh, five roosters from our last uh, hatch and we'll see what we get out of the next one. The hives are looking great. I will share some clips of my hive inspections from this morning momentarily. And um, let's take a peek right now, actually. It's going to be a hot and humid day. So I'll just kind of walk you through what I do first before I even open my hives um, anytime I do inspections. Uh, it's pretty early right now. Um, not as early as it's been this week, but I go around to every entrance and I take a peek at the activity and I take a peek at the ground in front of the hive as well. And this, you know, I come over to the hives with a specific purpose for each one. Some of them I may not inspect, some I am. And um, what I like to do this for is that it helps me see if there's something wrong. So I might completely abandon my plans and I'll know that my priority is to get into a hive where there's something that doesn't look right. So if I don't see any activity at a hive, if I see a lot of dead bees in front of the hive, um, something else that I've encountered before is seeing a huge cluster of bees like hanging off of the front when maybe a young queen came back but didn't quite make it in the hive and needs a little help. So all of that's really important to be observant about. Um, but let's take a look inside. This room looks really good and I just wanted to show you um, what I look for in here. So the brood in here, I'm going to try and get pretty close. Like the brood is really healthy and plump and curled. Uh, pretty neatly in the comb. Um, they're they're going to be capping it. You can see some of these cells are already capped. Uh, so there's really, you know, a, a very obvious um, pattern of, um, you know, how she's been laying in here. Um, and there's some here, if you look, teeny tiny little miniature pieces of rice. Those are her eggs and some of these other cells. So she's been here within the last three days um, because the eggs remain eggs for three days. And, um, and this, this hive in particular, um, this was the swarm that I caught, um, which I don't even think I posted a video about. Um, I caught a swarm, it's very tiny, and it's taken them a while to fill this up, but those three frames right there, those are empty. So um, it's taken them a while to get up into the second box, um, but you can see their population's looking really good. And quick thing I wanted to show you, I fed four hives last night. So this was all filled in, this little girl, gotta get her out of here. Um, each of them got like about a quarter of syrup and they're all almost bone dry. Completely ate everything. This is Queen Uma. So her colony is looking absolutely fantastic. Um, this um, particular colony here was a split from a split. Um, she emerged this spring and she's now filled two boxes within the last few weeks. And I'm gonna give her a third box today. Um, really couldn't ask for anything more. She's great. All right, so now that we've seen the hives, let's take a peek in the high tunnel. I still intend, fully intend to do a high tunnel part two video. I know the part one is out there. And um, until then, let's just take a peek at this. I've got tomatoes, 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 and some peppers. Um, I've had some issues with tomato hornworms and you can kind of see through here. Oh, I've got the squash as well that's coming through, I'm training it. Um, before I get into those, this whole side has been potatoes. And tomorrow, all those potatoes are coming out and, and I'm gonna be doing a three sisters garden through here. I st already have some peas and beans started. Um, the squash you can see I've gotten running through and some cosmos and zinnia and calendula, um, to just getting it set up with those beneficial plants. Um, the irrigation runs right through here. So I'm gonna plant the corn along that and 
Um, I can definitely, and you can probably see this too, see a difference between the tomatoes on this side and the tomatoes on this side. I don't know why. I know that I have found some more hornworms on the left that could be contributing to this, and I haven't found as many on the right, but you can see like this damage on some of these tomatoes. Um, this is my first time growing in the high tunnel. I didn't really have a good plan. I got my peppers in and stuff, but like I didn't, because I was so focused on what the design I did for the garden, I didn't think of putting in basil and everything I normally do. So, oh, got a tomato. And let's see and get this in so I can have a little tomato snack, yes. Um, so this is, you know, this is the second tomato I've gotten from the high tunnel so far. Um, and let's see, these are looking pretty tall. Um, and just as I go through here, I like keep an eye out for tomato hornworms, um, but I, I'd really come in here with a black light at night. And this is the kind of damage that I look for. And I, I can't remember if this plant had the damage and I found the worms on it already, or if this is new damage. So it's kind of just like retracing my steps every time. But, you know, there's, oh, there's so many peppers back there. I need to get those, um, lots of stuff to plant still. Um, but some of the things that I look for to see if I can find them are like, see there's a the leaf loss up here. It's like clear cut. I also keep keeping a little eye out for like any droppings. Um, let's see if there's any over here. Yep, there's some. So that, that makes me think, let's look up. And oh my goodness, we have one. So I... I don't want to touch it. <laughs> so what I've been doing, like this hipless plant looks fairly healthy. I'll probably just take a little piece off of the leaf here and I'll carry that over because I, I usually bring my gloves and like a little Tupperware. But, um, you know, let's take a closer look. So that little red tail or horn on the end and the spots on it, from what I read online, that means it's a tobacco hornworm, which also eat tomatoes, obviously, but just FYI. And I'll just give a brief walk around the garden, nothing in depth um, because there's so much to go over, but this is my Japanese tomato cage experiment. I got um, probably the most tomatoes forming on there than any other part of the in-ground garden. And I will do a video on that specifically eventually, hopefully soon. Um, and I've got not as much flower setting on the tomatoes as I did last year. I'm kind of surprised. I just love the view from this side with the red bee balm. Uh, I've got, um, you know, the bean lady doing well. Um, this whole side closest to me right now is uh, where I harvested um, potatoes from and I've planted buckwheat and sunflowers in their place just to build soil. I'm letting the kale and lettuces bolt for the pollinators and just letting things rest. Okay, I made it down to the coop. Um, tobacco hornworms are, they don't bite, they don't sting or anything. I just don't want to touch them, so I had to go get gloves. And Mildred is a big fan of these, so we're going to watch her enjoy it. We'll introduce them to each other, and we'll see what happens. Mildred! Mildred girl. Oh, there she goes. Everybody likes it. Hey, all of so I want to get you caught up on a few things that have been going on. Um, it is super muggy outside. It had just rained before and now the sun is out. You could probably hear the air compressor going in the garage because my husband's working on stuff. So I feel like inside is going to be the best place to go at this point. Uh, I know I started off by saying this would be kind of a quick update, um, but there was a lot to get caught up on with the hives pond garden, the high tunnel, the in-ground garden, the deck garden, the quails, the chickens. It's been several weeks, maybe more than a month at this point since my last video, and I'm sorry this is shaky. Let me fix this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a little less shaky, hopefully. Uh, so a few things that have gone on. Um, I didn't really have him in too many videos, but uh, our, our dog passed away um, on Mother's Day, and he was almost 14, and it's been very challenging um, getting by without him, um, having a really, really hard time um, at this point. Um, and every day, it just it doesn't seem to get any better. Um, but um, you know, we're we're just really missing him a lot. So, so that had happened. Uh, we also have family um, with uh, declining health, and so we've been managing that. Of course, the demands of work are always there. 
And the garden, this is the time of year when it needs most of the attention. And I've never had tomato hornworms before or tobacco hornworms, whichever they are. And, uh, you know, having to manage that is going out into the high tunnel, going out into the garden every other night with a black light. You know, like all of that time adds up and it's time taken away from sleeping. It's time taken away from rest and relax relaxation. And, you know, it's it's been pretty busy. So I also, um, I have not regularly uh, created videos during the growing season. You know, I, I uh, started last year, um, actually I started a few years ago in the winter time when there's usually a little bit more uh, time available. So I'm not really sure what the right cadence is for uh, this time of year, uh, for me at least. Uh, I, I don't really want to promise to new videos on certain days like I do in the winter. It's much more manageable for me to commit to, uh, you know, producing a new video um, multiple times per week. I have no shortage of ideas for videos. Uh, believe me, my journal is full of uh, videos that I want to do. It's mainly just having uh, the time available to put them together and to edit them and get them uploaded. On top of this, uh, right when I felt like I was getting in a good groove with videos, um, the app that I use ended up stopping partnership with YouTube. So there's a lot more uh, administrative steps involved with me posting a video. Uh, and it's just kind of an unfortunate thing. It takes many more hours to upload a video now than it did before, which was done in less than 15 minutes. Um, and what's weird is I have um, internet now that is 50 times as fast. So it has nothing to do with our internet speeds. It's mainly um, the uh, the apps that I use for, um, for editing and uploading. Being that time is short during the growing season, I can't really research other options at this point to see what's faster. Um, you know, it's almost at this point just, let's just get the video together and get it out there. Cause I, I do want to um, keep you updated uh, I want to see what's going on, um, you know, in your gardens and hear, uh, you know, what you're experiencing. And if you're facing some new challenges like tomato hornworms or, um, you know, fungal growth on your tomatoes uh, because you're planting them in the same place, like, like I'm seeing here, um, you know, I want to know about that because, you know, those things are preventable and manageable. The last thing I'll share is thank you. I really appreciate when I get comments from people, um, when I get emails from people, um, and thank you for your patience, thank you for watching, thank you for reaching out. I love sharing about the garden, I love watching videos um, from other gardeners and beekeepers and um, you know, just learning as much as I can uh, to have, uh, you know, create a beautiful space here for, for the bees, for wildlife, um, and, and for myself too, so thank you.